Vegas is for the girls. Maybe if you did care, you just didn't care enough. Or <laughs> and they have blessed the next hoe. That was so loud. I can't help it. Should we ground right now? Let's get ready. Can we start over? Ramble. Pretty basic. Thank you to Wondery, DoorDash, Trail Mix Games, and Cozy Earth for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Pretty Basic. I'm your co-host, Alicia Marie. And I am Remy Cruz. And today you have just the girlies in the studio. Just the girls in the stew. In the stew. We've been having so many amazing <laughs> guests. What? <laughs> like, 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 Sue. You thought a no, stew? No, I don't know one time that person roasted you. <laughs> me? When did they roast me? And you were like... <laughs> Going to the studio and someone going to, they're like, isn't it just an apartment complex? <laughs> <laughs> it's still a studio. <laughs> I think about that all the time. Wait, I haven't thought about that since. So I was like, since it happened, I was just like, damn, they read us. I thought it was so funny. I mean, what con I mean, what, what, what constitutes the studio versus an apartment complex? I mean, no, I just thought it was funny. And you were both right. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Sometimes people's comments are like unhinged, but like in a hilarious way. But I don't think they realize how hilarious they are. I appreciate being read to filth. I really do. Do you? <laughs> in that way? Yes. If it's me, absolutely not. <laughs> when uh, it's me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was an us. Like, that's funny. Yeah, that that's was funny. an us thing. Like, yes, it is an apartment complex. And yes. Two things can be true at once. It can, it can, it can. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's I funny. just think specifically stew because stew. we don't call it stew. Like I was just laughing when I said it. No, I get it. I get sorry, it. sorry, we can end it. That was this is long winded. <laughs> no, no, Anyways, fine. take it away. Honestly, I feel like we've had so many amazing guests. Also, Cal, Ollie, <laughs> yeah. Amazing guest. Amazing guest. Diera. Most importantly, Diera. Most importantly, Diera. If you guys have not watched that video, honestly, it was such an amazing episode. Like one of my favorites, I think in PB history, not only was her fit giving. I love her. I loved it. Cause when she was, it, she walked in the door and I was around the corner, like kind of touching up my makeup. So I was like, oh my God, hi, how are you? And I knew I was like, this bitch is going to look so fucking good. I turned the corner and she's in a <laughs> matching all pink. And I was like, ah. If this you, is what we should be giving. If you missed it, go. we really should. Mm -hmm. If you missed it, go watch it. But she was wearing <laughs> an all pink, uh, like a cozy. It was from Soroya. Sir Oya. It's like a, what's that material? Like like a blanket adjacent, yeah. honestly. Also, I'm wearing a blanket right now. Sorry, my back and my tummy hurt. So I'm cozy. But she was essentially, <laughs> I'm dressing like Deer. <laughs> You're like, I am giving. Yes. She <laughs> it was like a pink long robe with a matching pink halter with a matching pink was it a skirt or a mm -hmm. pant or dress I, I couldn't even remember because it was so beautiful uh with her matching pink sunnies and she just looked amazing and was amazing and I loved her so go watch that episode if you haven't yet and comment what other guests you want this season we have a lot lined up we do we've got someone coming right after this that I am so excited for yet also very nervous for because I've been a fan like honestly honestly i'd put her in the same pool for me as megan trainer as like how That's much i lot. love both them like specifically well them as people but also just their music obsessed with and i cannot believe she's coming in so so be sure to come back and uh check back in a couple weeks because it's gonna be good i think that everyone's gonna be shook you know what else people are gonna be shook about that we're matching to the them? fact that we're matching <laughs> again we did not plan this i did pick her up Mm -hmm. And I didn't even like look at what you were wearing and you went, oh my God. <laughs> and there we were Both sitting of us in wearing our navy blue tops. Navy blue corsets to be exact. I wish I had worn black leather pants. I know that would have been too good. It would have been so good. Where's your top from? Mine's from White Fox. Cute. Yours? House of CB. Loves it. My boobs are popping out a little bit though. What do you mean? They look great. Thank you. Um, we also match our studio. We do. Have you noticed the navy blue background? Yes, the little midnight stars on the side. I feel like they never see. Oh, no. I feel like the angles don't really show that side of the studio. Yeah, if you can't, 
you, if you didn't know and you haven't seen the studio tour, we do have these walls that have like Rolls Royce Starry Night mm-hmm. lights on the sides that are stunning. And um, we're just feeling very matchy matchy today. Mm-hmm. Which actually uh, goes perfect because we're going to recap our, our Taylor Swift era's tour extravaganza we, we went are. to vegas this weekend yes um we have a lot to unpack i feel like you know it's been a while they get just the girlies i know some of you guys love these episodes i guess we'll just get into it oh, let's get into it let's we get have- into the era story because when we were posting on tiktok a majority of the comments were like i cannot wait for the pretty basic breakdown of this and as we're recording right now taylor swift has only performed in glendale arizona in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I indeed did go to both weekends. Mm-hmm. So, so far, I've seen them two out of four. We're going 50-50 right now. <laughs> uh, but by the time this is out, I believe her, I don't know where her next Texas. stop. <gasps> it's, have. Texas is next? Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh my God, oh mm-hmm. my God, oh my God, oh my God. So as we all know, Alicia did not get tickets to the first show. And I have never been to an opening night show in my life. Specific, even like, and something as big as the Eras Tour, which... Was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, I went with Cal. We did uh, a road trip over to Arizona and met up with his sister, Abby, Abby's boyfriend, Tyler. And it was a family affair. It was so much fun. And being, I, I knew I had so much pressure on myself to get the content out for the Swifties that couldn't be there <laughs> with me. I spent the entire show obviously watching, obviously enjoying, but also I wanted to get the content out Mm -hmm. because I knew people wanted to see and I wanted people to be there with me. And it did feel like everybody was with me. It was the coolest thing to see so many people in the show for Taylor. Mm -hmm. Like as a, I'm a Swifty, I'm a fan. I'm a pretty big fan, I would say, but I'm definitely not like, there are, there are some Swifties that are like die, die hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, but being able to be there and like experience that with her, I was just so proud. I got so emotional for her at one point because everybody was screaming, screaming, screaming. All the lights were going off. And I was like, that is so cool that this many people and obviously so many more for all these other shows came for her and are supporting her. And she's so cool. No, like she killed it. She is one of the best performers. Even if people don't, like her music which like I don't agree we can agree to disagree on that mm-hmm. however you no one can say she's not a um, an amazing performer no like everything about the show so the show starts and I was trying to film as much as I could I was texting you I was texting Whitney I was like trying to tell everyone the set list like oh my god she starts with Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince <sighs> which I I know we all were wondering, also like if you're not a Swifty, this is not the episode for you, but I'm still gonna (laughs) go into the details. There was like a whole TikTok discussion before the, you know, opening night, what was she gonna begin with? And that's what I was actually most excited for. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what it was gonna be. And I saw so many people talking about, um, you know, possible conspiracy theories as to what it was gonna be. I thought that it was gonna be, are you ready for it? But that's technically how she started. That's, yeah, yeah. But still, I thought like, what a wonderful start way to start uh-huh. this show. What did you think it was going to be? I didn't think it would be ready for it because she did that last time, but I did not think it'd be Miss Americana. And my little heart was so freaking happy because that was is my favorite song on the Lover album that I felt got looked over. I felt like no one ever talked about it. Like That's your favorite Lover album song? Yes. Wow. I would like, it is my, I love it so much. And I truly like felt like I was the only one who loved it. So I'm just so happy that it's now getting its moment. Cause obviously like Lover was so long ago and then COVID. I just feel like as a whole, it kind of got looked over. And I was, I, I cried, I cried. I cried. I had, I really was not expecting her to start. I don't think a lot of people were expecting no, her to start with I that. No, I think that's why I loved it. But it, it was, was not expected. It's so smart. When she comes up from the riser on the platform, it starts with, it's been a long time coming, but, and then she goes into it, which what a perfect line to start with. Tangent. As you were speaking, I thought about how I'm curious to know what your favorite song on each album is. Can we go through that? Yeah, we can. So we are going to go through each album and say our favorite song from each album. You can only pick one. Mm -hmm. One. Mm. You're allowed one tie. Let's say that. Oof. Okay. Start with debut. Honestly, it's this one's easy for me. Teardrops on my guitar. I feel like that's most people's on her like debut album. I am an hour song girly. Oh my God. There's so many good ones though. I'm only me when I'm with (laughs) you. I would say our song is my favorite on debut. Okay. Fearless. Fearless. 
Oh my God, again, there's so many good songs on every album. I love other songs, but the amount of times I've like listened to Love Story and loved it, like I feel like I just have to say that. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm not a Love Story girl. I do love White Horse too. I was so excited she had that as a surprise. I was going to say, I really love White Horse, but oh my God, every song on that album is so good. I think I have to go with Breathe. Breathe? I love Breathe. Can I just breathe? (laughs) Okay, speak now. Back to December or um, Enchanted. Ooh, ooh. Back to December is good. I really like, again, a no skip album. I'm going to go with, <laughs> I love Last Kiss, but I think I'm going to go with Long Live. <laughs> I love how that's so Long hard. Live makes me so happy. Okay. But they're all so good. Okay. <gasps> Red. Red. Okay. My favorite album. Is that really your favorite album? It's my favorite album. That's crazy to me. I love Red. Red for me. I, as we all know, it's like the fall album, but it just, nostalgic. I, it's so nostalgic. It resonates with me so much. And specifically, well, oh, you go, what's your favorite song first? I mean, are we talking Red or Red Taylor's version? Red Taylor's version. Okay, let me look. Obviously. I mean, now I feel like I have to say all too well, 10 minute version, but yes, also. that's That goes without saying though. You can pick a second. Okay, obviously that goes Same without here. saying. <laughs> um, I... Another song that I truly think did not have the moment it deserved is um, The Last Time. You loved The Last Time. I, I remember you always talking about that one. With Gary Lightbody from um, Snow Patrol. Oh, I mean, I am not a huge The Last Time girly. No, it's fine. I think, I mean, again, all too well. 10 minute. Oh my God. I love Treacherous. I also love State of Grace. <laughs> I think I got to go State of Grace. That for that me. That fills you. My... We've talked about this before, but how like you have a song from your past that you, it takes you right back to that, like to a certain place. For me, it was when, in case we didn't know, I lived in downtown for like four years of my life and it was one of the most pivotal experiences of my life. I was touring the apartment that I moved into and I was getting off the freeway, State of Grace started playing and I was in downtown. And I remember my head thinking like, this is- Core memory. This is going to be a core (laughs) memory. And I think of State of Grace every time I drive through downtown now. So- I have to say State of Grace. Oh, my God. 1989. Is that your favorite album? One of them. That, okay. and, that and Rep are just like, oh, so good. Oh, my God. Clean for me. You like Clean? I love Clean. That, I would say that's probably like my least favorite song on that You're album. You're kidding me. No, I'm dead ass. <gasps> clean with the, uh, a really close second of I Wish You Would. I mean, I fucking love Blank Space. I love Out of the Woods. Ooh, I also I love... Um, New Romantics and Wonderland on yeah. the Deluxe. I think that the 1989 Deluxes are the best songs. Best Deluxes. Personally. Oh, they're so good. Okay, Reputation. So It Goes. Ooh. Getaway Car. I was going to say Getaway Car, I think, for me. Or Close Second, Delicate Trauma. <laughs> um, Lover. And Don't Blame Me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Also, <laughs> Don't Blame Me is my other song that ever since it came out, I was like, this is not getting its moment. And thank God TikTok made it have a thing. Like, that song has been fire from day one. Did TikTok blow? Yes. Because it's been, it's been around since Reputation. What was the trend on TikTok for it? Oh, no. It's just like that... Ha- at least on my For You page, I've been seeing it everywhere. Oh, I haven't seen it at all, but really? good. I'm glad. I feel like TikTok really, like... Don't I, blame me, love, make me crazy. I feel like she performed it because TikTok. I feel like if TikTok didn't... She did the bejeweled dance. Oh, I didn't see that. She did. Okay, love her. Um, Miss Americana. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a cruel summer girl through and through. Mm. Special shout out to the bridge of death by a thousand cuts. There you go. Folklore, Remy. I have to say, I, since the concerts, I would actually like to formally apologize to you and the Pretty Basic community. Oh my God. And the Swifties and Taylor Swift. I did not give Folklore nor Evermore a fair, fair shot. And I truly apologize. And I know it's really lame that I went to both concerts and then I'm saying it after. That's okay. But really good albums. I apologize profusely. I think I like Evermore a little more, Mm -hmm. but they were both really good. And I'm upset with myself for missing out on this song, but I have to take, I I take all my words back. Oh my God, you're good. Fantastic albums. What what was your favorite song? Ooh, um, I think, oh, I really like, mm, 
I think August. I was going to say, I'm torn between Last Great American Dynasty, another one that went under the radar. I'm so glad she performed it. Um, Exile with Bon Iver is honestly like one of my favorite ones. Okay. It's very sad, but I love it. Okay. I like Peace too. Also, this is me trying. This is me trying. Wait, we have two more albums. Oh my God, sorry. I, know, I didn't realize so long. how long this is going to be. It's okay. <laughs> okay, Evermore. Tolerate it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, she loves Tolerate I love It. Tolerate It. I'm going to go with Tis the Damn Season. Mm -hmm. I really like that one. Or Champagne Problems, obviously. Yeah. Okay. And then Midnights. Snow on the Beach. Or you Mastermind. You love Snow on the Beach. Yes. I love Snow on the Beach. I do wish Lana was featured more. I know. The first time I ever listened to it, I was like waiting for her to come in on the second verse or the bridge or something. So I was kind of let down that she wasn't in it. But I do love how it just sounds like she's kind of an angel in it, like in the background. Because mm -hmm. you hear her like kind of. But and she I, helped write it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just, I, I wish there was like a little more. Yeah. Just a little more. For sure. I, uh, I'm a question girly. Um, question. I love questions. That's a good one. If you listen to Pretty Basic, which you clearly are, we definitely have talked about some bad dates in the past. Past <laughs> experiences. Content, maybe content. Uh, you know, I think I think we all have had bad dates. I think we've all had one or two bad dates in our lifetime. Let's be real. Everyone's had them. Everyone can relate to them. And now it's time to laugh at them. Bad Dates is a hilarious new comedy podcast hosted by... <gasps> I love Jamila Jamil. <laughs> oh my God. She's so cute. I loved her in The Good Place. And she's hosting a new podcast from the team behind the podcast, Smart List, which Alicia and I love. Bad dates will make you laugh a lot, cry a little, and cringe just enough. Because as we all know, the worst dates make the best stories. I am truly so excited for it to be your turn to share all of your bad date experiences because I think one of my favorite pretty basic eras was when I was dating and I'd come on and we talked about Turtle Dude or Bumble Boy or Clout Demon. Uh, we they got just, some they, good they, ones. They, we had some good stories and I can't wait for you to share because it's truly such a bonding experience for everybody. Well, Jamila, if you ever need a, some, some guests on the show... <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. Each week, Jamila's favorite comedians, celebrities, and funny friends share their epic and true dating nightmares and misfires. Jamila's guests include Conan O'Brien, Nikki Glaser, Tig Notaro, and many more. Plus, you'll also hear from listeners who shared their own dating disasters. Like the tale of the guy who could only get frisky on top of a pile of stuffed Garfield toys, or the enraged beauty queen with food poisoning who chased her date through a kitchen window. There's even a bad date that involves gay Bigfoot. Follow Bad Dates wherever you get your podcast. You can listen early and ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. So as you guys know, Alicia and I just got back from a trip and I got home yesterday and I wasn't feeling up to go grocery shopping. I had zero groceries in the fridge. I was so tired. I had so much work to get done because I had been putting it off. I had to unpack. I had to like shower, do all these sorts of things. And I really needed groceries. I used DoorDash to DoorDash my groceries to my house and it was an absolute lifesaver. Wait, not you unpacking and being, you worked when you got home. I literally just laid on the couch. I DoorDash too. When we were, before you dropped me off, you I was did. like, <laughs> I need food. Let me DoorDash. And I'm just going to be honest. It wasn't because I didn't have time to go to the store. It was just because I didn't feel like going to the store. And you know what? That's okay. DoorDash can have your back. Either way. No matter what. No matter who you are in this friendship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you guys know, I'm always making cooking and throwing content and it is a win of the day if I somehow remember to get every single ingredient that I need. Most of the time I forget one small thing or I, you know, don't anticipate that I am going to run out of sugar or flour, whatever it may be. And DoorDash always comes in clutch for, you know, grabbing that thing and having it to my door pretty much immediately. And they have thousands of grocery stores you can choose from. Also, if you guys want even more value, you can save on all of your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership, which I have this. And you guys, if you use it as much as I do, you need it. I was going to say, it's actually worth it. So get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code PRETTYBASIC at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $20 no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter code PRETTYBASIC. Don't forget that's code pretty basic for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. All right, guys, that wraps up our favorite songs on each Taylor Swift album. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved playing that game back to the concerts. Night one, obviously it's starting. I saw a lot of people on TikTok talking about how the night one crowd was not loud enough. I must say, as someone who was there, it was fucking 
loud. It was really loud. But I also think most of the time we were just like not as loud because you're just in awe slash confusion of like what's happening, what's going on, what's coming next. So like most of the time I was just like trying to take it all in. Yeah. Yeah. Abby didn't eat, drink, uh, Tish had never phoned because she didn't want to have to leave to go to the bathroom. She didn't want to do anything. She just wanted to fully take it all I in. I love that. And it was it was really, really cool. And then she obviously announced at that show that she's doing two surprise songs from each, or for, for each show individually. And she was, I remember her like little spiel before it was like, oh, I've, um, there are so many songs that I've never been able to perform live. And so my goal of this, she was like, if I don't fuck it up, is to do, Uh, a new song at each show. Mm -hmm. So, because it was the first night also, I wasn't sure what was coming next. I wasn't sure if it was just one and then she ended up doing two. um, And I wasn't sure. She started with Tim McGraw, I think it was. Oh my God. I believe she started with Tim McGraw. No, I think she started with Mirrorball and then went into Tim McGraw. But I wasn't sure if she was going to do like one debut song and like switch that. But now after seeing a few more, it turns out she's doing two different songs at each Mm. show, which is really cool. Yeah. And there's not really a a debut element. Do you think she's going to do Last Time with Gary Lightbody? You can (laughs) ask her too. If he came, I would be so sad I missed that. I would cry. I mean- she might, she might and but, that's the type of song that wouldn't have she wouldn't have performed either you but, know what I mean but also even if we're not there that's okay because someone's gonna film it and then you can watch it isn't it crazy how I mean this is T the only strike I've ever had on my channel ever basically a strike is like if you like break YouTube guidelines they'll give you a strike three strikes you're out they'll like delete your channel right the only strike I've ever received was from Taylor Swift's team because I I vlogged at her concert Mm. and they decided that that wasn't okay. So they removed my video and I got a strike on my channel. And I was so sad because that was one of my favorite vlogs ever of us like going, like, I can't even watch it now. Oh, they just delete it. It just deletes. It says like removed, like, um, you know, (gasps) Oh, I didn't know. Like so So for six months I couldn't do unlisted videos. Like you get rid of features when you get strikes. Like they like, punish you basically so i i had what a, a random thing to I lose know. the first one was unlisted <laughs> video so any like any videos that i needed to send to like my management or anything like that i had to upload to my second channel to then send them an unlisted video what a like random feature to lose i know though. i don't even know if it's the same but that was back in like 20 i mean that was her 1989 tour is the one i vlogged and i was i was so like i was so sad that's just so sad that they but, like took the video down like at least like restrict like at least copyright let it, at least let yeah. it be in your like feed still though I know but what's so crazy is now I mean record labels are so for TikTok and like now they're encouraging us to go to these shows and live stream it and film it and like they want that which is just so crazy because last time it like they would have they've been like no filming no any you know what I mean well I'm sure I think with Taylor Swift specifically though if we were to post her concert or like clips they would still take it down right now I feel like her team is very still I just feel like as a fan I was really sad (laughs) Maybe they could give it back to you. You could ask them. I don't think they will. Can you please um, perform the last time? I just feel like if she does it, that, this is such a tan. No one cares. <laughs> like literally no one cares. No, the Swifties care. Well, I just, the Swifties do care. Um, Can you please, rep- can I maybe um, knock it? Well, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, I spent most of the first show like a feral rat trying to upload these TikToks for everyone. And there is like, there are so many people that were like, no spoilers. And then I felt really bad. But then there were so many people that were like, thank you so much. Oh my God. My whole for you page has just been like Taylor, Taylor, Taylor all Taylor. Taylor all day long. I mean, overall, well, we'll skip over. That was the first show. Second show you and I went together or Vegas, the second show that I went to blown away in general for the show itself by the production. Like I saw that it costs like $2 million. I think it is each time for her to put the show on. Oh, um, that makes so much sense. There's and so a- much in it. Apparently it is the most lucrative show in the history of like forever. I think like the most, um, the tour that like got the most money ever was I think the Elton John tour. And then before oh. that was Madonna. Oh. Um, and I think she like blew it out of the water. Hell yeah. I saw this like thing and then it said it cost $2 million each show they did like a breakdown obviously we don't know but they were yeah. like trying to do the math as to like how much it costs like between them um, venue mm-hmm. staff fireworks also all these dancers things. musicians mm-hmm. like two million dollars a which show which we were talking about ed sheeran the other day and 
we were like, damn, no wonder he makes so much money because he writes all his own songs, right? So he gets the money from that, which like, that's amazing. But also it's just him performing. He doesn't have backup dancers. He doesn't have, he doesn't need to get like hoisted into the air. Like he doesn't need any of the, like the fireworks, <laughs> like literal fireworks. Well, actually maybe he has had them. I don't know, but I, I haven't been, but I was just like, damn, that's crazy because you don't think of how much the artist has to pay for all of that stuff on top of it before they like pocket anything. Yeah. So I feel like that's, it's so interesting to hear about like 2 million a night. That's crazy. I remember seeing this article about, how much money each singer brought in for the year. Mm -hmm. And I remember Ed Sheeran was very high up. And I was like, I love Ed Sheeran. I've been to the mm -hmm. his shows before. Um, and I was like, how is it so, how is he making so much money? But he's also obviously like super fucking big and famous. But when you go to his concert, it's literally just him. And a guitar. With a guitar. And a loop pedal. The speaker. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> it. Yeah. And so he makes pretty much all the money. Yeah. But he well deserved. A one man show. No, but like, damn, like you don't think about that when you are approach of, you know, being a musician. It's like, hey, backup dancers, smoke, fog machines, yeah. this, like all that stuff. Insane. Absolutely love it. Special shout out to Everything Has Changed. Taylor Swift featuring Ed Sheeran. Good song. We can agree on that. Yes. So obviously we just went to Vegas. Yes. I feel like we have to explain how that trip happened. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> AKA me inviting myself on a trip. She Ew, did invite I'm herself. I'm so sorry. She did invite herself. We were <laughs> sitting, as we said, we were on a TV show. We were sitting in our little set chairs for long periods at a time. And I looked at my phone and so I have a best friend named Steph. I talked about her on the pod. <gasps> Hi Steph. She's, Hi, definitely, Steph. she's definitely watching this right I now. I love her. Uh, Steph and I met in college in my sorority. And we hit it off immediately, became super, super, super close. Like truly like one of my best friends I've ever had. And she's always just been the sweetest, most supportive, like silly, goofy girly. And uh, she, silly, she's got two kids as we know. Hi, Grace and hi, Aria. And um, she lived in Dallas at one point. If you watched my vlogs, you know, I'd visit her in Dallas. She mo recently moved to Atlanta and she's been just, you know, really busy being a full-time mom, which is a huge job within itself. And her fiance, Jordan, reached out to me and he was saying that basically he's been traveling a lot for work and uh, Steph's been so busy and with the move and the kids, like he's just so grateful for her. So he wanted to send her on a little girl's trip and he wanted to buy her and I tickets to go somewhere to see Taylor Swift. Obviously everything was sold out though. So he was like, can you help me figure out like where to go? Like, where would you guys want to go? And I like showed you the text and I was like, oh my God, like it's so, that's so nice and sweet. And Alicia was like, I want to come. And I was like, oh, let me ask no, you. No, no. If she can to, go. My, to my defense, I was like, oh my God, she lives in Texas. My best friend lives in Texas. I'll go on the flight with you and you guys can go to the concert and I'll like see Alicia. Like, I'll go with you. I'd love to go with you. Oh. Obviously, I'm down for Taylor, but I was like, oh, I, I'll, I would love to go with you. You know what I mean? Like, to Texas. And then. And then I was like- You just forgot she moved. I didn't realize she moved. Uh, okay, and okay. then you're like, oh, let me ask. And then I was like, oh, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm down to go to the actual show too, but like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that till right <laughs> no, now. No, literally- Which you were invited, obviously no, though. No, 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 which it was great. I had so much fun. But I was like, <laughs> oh my God, like that's what I meant by it. That's what I was like, oh my God, I'll come. Like, I'll, I'd love to come because I've been wanting to visit Alicia. Then I realized, oh, Steph doesn't live in Texas anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's so funny. Cause I thought you were just inviting yourself, which obviously, and I was like, no. Let Oh, ask him <laughs> and I asked I was like can Alicia come and he was like this was this is the most like straight boy husband response quote unquote yes I think she likes her she can come <laughs> which obviously I know because Steph and I talk about you all the time she's obsessed with you she loves the podcast no, I love her she will often call me and ask me things that like you know if you're talking about something like but not giving the full tea on the pod she'll call <laughs> and be like can you tell me and I'm like yes I can tell you <laughs> about whatever it may be um so yeah, I mean, Alicia joined in and then for a minute we were gonna maybe go to Dallas, but they were just like, we had to pick which date to go to obviously. And then we wanted to pick like a fun city where we could still like have a fun weekend. Uh, and the dates with Steph kid, Steph's kids and like obviously having to get childcare and things lined up and we ended up going to Vegas. So then it was you, me, Steph, and then Steph's best friend from Dallas flew in. Her name is Shelby. So it was all four of us doing a little girls trip. And I haven't been on like a full girls trip like it that. Was so much fun. I haven't been on one in so long, I want to say. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm making that up. I don't know. But regardless, like, it just felt so empowering. I don't know. I just, like, loved a girl's trip. I haven't done a girl's trip specifically to Vegas in a while. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Vegas is for the girls. Yeah. It is so fun for the girls. And we had an amazing time. And best of all, you and Steph got to bond. Oh, my God. For the first I time ever. love her. I love her so much. So it was so fun because it was just, like, so spontaneous. So we go, we get in, 
we got there kind of early, um, but her and her friend got in later. Um, what was the first? Oh, dinner. We'd catch. Yes. I was like, what did we do the yeah. first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a like, gamble. oh, I don't remember. Gamble. Oh, yeah, we did gamble. Here's the thing. Remy and I have unlocked a new... Uh, Passion. Passion. Hobby. Hobby. I love the blackjack tables. We love to gamble. I just love doing it together. And then I love when, like... <laughs> I love when like the guys are taking it so seriously next to us and like they're like anytime they lose they're like damn it like oh, oh, oh. like it's comical and then where they're like hee hee double it <laughs> and it's just so we win we're like yeah yeah we're like oh no 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 my favorite is we can't count that fast because it's so quick and it's just so quick which like we're getting way better okay but sometimes we're like did we win <laughs> and then we're like oh we won and then the guys next to us are like oh oh Damn. And then they just like get up and leave. And like, it's just so, f I, I just wonder what they, th I, it's, it's hilarious. They to think me. we're dumb bitches. Are we though? No, we're smart bitches. Cause we love, we won money. We won money. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun. We, so we got in, we gambled, we had dinner. We just like did little girly things. And then the next day was all about Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. All And it also was like, it was Steph's trip. We were like, this is your yeah. time. Mama's weekend off. What do you want to do? We're going to do it. And we ended up going to the concert, obviously. And Steph was so, both you and Steph and Shelby. I wasn't standing next to Shelby, so I couldn't really see her as much. Mm -hmm. But like you and Steph were being so cute. You start bawling immediately. Cry. Steph cried like 20 times a day. Just to, <laughs> like, she would just like, we'd be in the hotel and she'd just be like, I'm just so happy to be here. I, I love you guys so much. And she'd start crying. And it was just so sweet. And they lost their minds at the concert. And it was just so fun to be able to like watch you guys mm -hmm. enjoy. I'm really glad that I went the first weekend because then I obviously like I kind of knew what to expect. Um, and I got to really focus on you two, which was so much fun. Oh my God. No, it was, it was honestly amazing. And I had a blast. Our show, the two surprise songs were oh. Cowboy Like Me. Mm -hmm. And she brought out... Oh, she like did this whole little story about how I, I, I'm assuming it's sometimes it's kind of hard to hear what she's saying because yeah. of like the response of like, oh yeah, the, the only studio that they could record in in COVID yes. um, was the guy from Mumford and Sons. Yes. Which I'm assuming, where was that? Did she specify where? Mm -mm. Well, she recorded with him and then he was in the studio and she's like, you should try like jump on this track and see. He did it and they did Cowboy Like Me. And then after she was like, I was trying to think of what song to do after this and you know how to correlate them she's mm -hmm. like cowboy cowboys ride horses and then I recorded this video oh my god Steph's <laughs> voice in it is hilarious I please go check out my tiktok I wanted to film the surprise song and I was really excited to, to film that and um Steph was sitting next to me and Steph is like a little like troll when she screams she just like her voice goes all like <laughs> fry so when I'm recording and Steph's favorite song is Sparks Fly it always has been since mm -hmm. college like she's obsessed with Sparks Fly so you know Taylor's like I, I was trying to think of what song to sing next and you hear Steph in the back go Sparks Fly, <laughs> Sparks Fly. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like cow and she's at the cowboy thing and then you hear her go white white <laughs> and she's screaming and then I recorded it obviously and I could hear her screaming yeah. and it's so funny because I want to scream too but when I'm filming I take it very seriously I'm like I'm trying to be still yes. I'm trying to like get no audio around me well that's the worst thing when you're at a concert and you're trying to record and all you hear later is you singing and it's so off and you're like oh my god it's like that's the worst thing so I've done I've learned too to cover my mouth like I'm like oh my god okay no, it's such a good idea. I, I saw this really funny TikTok of this guy that was like so excited for Cruel Summer. So excited. And then the whole video, you can barely hear Taylor in the back and it's he's going, I'm drunk. <laughs> like, it's so funny. So Steph is screaming and then it, the video went viral and all the comments were like, who is screaming? She is me. That, that so would be funny. me at the concert. She was crying. She sang White Horse and it was a spiritual experience. Oh my God, it was so good. To see that live. Because I didn't get to see, I, the, the first tour I saw live was 1989. That's the first show Same. that I went to. Same. But I was a, I started being a huge, huge fan at the end of Fearless, start of Speak Now. So like I missed all the, like I didn't get to see Red Live, which is really upsetting. But like seeing that live was so cool. Yeah. Oh my God, so good. I love that she gave the albums that haven't had a tour yet, their own like really special moment. long moment. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Oh my God, a thousand percent. Um, Costumes, the Louboutins. Uh, 
the costumes, the production, the like transitions between albums was so, so well done. Oh my God. I, I can't even imagine how long she was working on this. I really can't. I think they said like, I mean, she said for years she's been wanting to. So I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure it's been like such a long time. Long time coming, but I wonder. I mean, also ten albums. Like it's so perfect. Is it ten? It's ten. Oh my god! Yeah, I feel like it's so well. Obviously, without counting the Taylor's versions, but I just feel like it's so perfect. Even like the whole house situation of like, uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've just been thinking about this a lot. I think the the graphic or what it was. What is it called? Just like the video, like the whole idea of like the house and how they all fit perfectly into place. Even down to like the merch. It's like nine photos of her I believe it is with her in the middle and it just like it is so well done Remy and I have been in our travel blogger era I feel like we've been on planes left and right traveling trains buses you know we are on the go let's be real traveling can be a little overwhelming sometimes but you know something that makes it just so much better games on your phone (gasps) We were literally on a plane yesterday and I was playing games on my phone because I didn't have Wi-Fi. I saw that. I really did. I looked over (laughs) and I was like, oh my God, she's playing. I love playing games because I feel like it just keeps me busy. It keeps my mind agile. I enjoy a little phone game. You got games on your phone. Uh, You know, whether you're a kid, an adult, or wherever in between or above or below, everybody loves a good game. I also love a laid back game where I don't have to think too hard about it but it still keeps my attention. It helps pass the time. And my personal favorite kind of phone games are ones that have a story to them. Mm. I've talked about it a lot, a lot on this podcast. I love a good story time game because I just get so invested and I can spend all day long getting lost in the story. So if you're also looking for some games to play, um, may we suggest downloading Love and Pies by Trail Mix Games because it's for free. So in the game, you play as Amelia and you take over the old family cafe and restore it to its former glory. And as Alicia said, there is a Lake Pass event, which basically takes the fun to a whole new level. A brand new limited time event is available for all players of Love and Pies. There's been a bizarre flood at an old warehouse and part of the town is underwater. It's up to you to discover how it happened and who may be behind it. But hurry, the event only lasts through May 7th, so download Love and Pies to dive into the mystery. For a tasty mix of love and drama, download Love and Pies for free today. And check out the Lake Pass event available now through May 7th. That's Love and Pies, free to download in the App Store or Google Play. So Alicia and I got home yesterday from a trip and I had a wonderful time with you. I had a wonderful time cuddling and (laughs) sleeping next to each other, but there is nothing like getting back home to your own bed. Especially when the sheets are clean. Uh, Exactly. Mm -hmm. Clean, cold, crisp. Mm -hmm. I love blasting the air and getting into my nice warm bed. And if you guys also are very passionate about your beds like we are, then you need to try Cozy Earth. Also, I'm such a hot sleeper. I sweat so much if I don't have the right sheets. And I'm so like grateful that now you can find sheets for any temperature that you want. Like you can get (gasps) cooling sheets. You can get ones for like cold sleeper. Like there's so many different kinds now and I love it. And if you guys didn't know, Cozy Earth makes the most luxurious sheets and other bedding products that are absolutely amazing. So, you know, if you guys are looking for anything, whether you're moving into a new apartment, a new house, if you just want to up your bedding now, moving into a dorm, go into it with the best bedding possible. And they're so comfortable and they don't make me sweat. Like it's hard for me to find sheets that don't make me sweat. And best of all, which this is iconic, they were named one of Oprah's favorite things in 2018. Cozy Earth's best-selling bamboo sheet set is temperature regulating and incredibly soft. And to be put on Oprah's favorite things is- That says a lot. I mean, life goal. So the Cozy Earth bedding collection has a variety of luxury pillows, sheets, blankets, and more. And they also have a lengthy warranty, which is absolutely incredible if you guys are looking to invest. Cozy Earth provided an exclusive offer for our listeners today, up to 35% off site-wide when you use the code PRETTYBASIC. That's CozyEarth.com and code PRETTYBASIC when you check out for up to 35% off. Okay, I have an unpopular opinion. Actually, I don't know how unpopular this is because we talked about it with Kelsey Kreppel. Okay. I feel like because there's so many theories out there, it makes me a little underwhelmed when ones I think are going to happen don't happen. Yeah. And I kind of... I'm kind of over that side of TikTok. Like now when I hear guesses of what's going to happen, I think I would have loved to watch the show. Obviously like not no spoilers, but like I have heard about this house for such a long time. But if I saw the house when it organically came out, I would have been mind fucking blown. Do you know what I mean? Alicia Marie, I I am right there with you. Okay, okay. I was like, like I just uh, like I want, I feel like now when I hear like, 
here's a theory. I'm like, I'm over theories. I don't care about theories. I'm, I'm over the Easter eggs. Like I want to, I want them to be from her versus like what other people have said. I think it is super cool. And I love the theories. I specifically what really set me, like made me kind of over them is the Speak Now Taylor's version. The amount of possible dates that I've seen people like oh, yeah. fully come up with. And I fully believe it's been like three separate times now where I'm like, oh, it has to be right. Mm -hmm. And then nothing that yeah. has to be right. Nothing. But now I'm like, I can't get my hopes up anymore. I love that people let people have their fun. Though. Oh, totally. Totally. You know what really made me over the Taylor Swift Easter eggs mm. was when Midnight's came out and then everyone was saying there's going to be a 3 a.m. something or a, like another thing. And I expect expected there to be something at three versus being holy shit it was three there's a more like there, they almost made me expect it which made me less excited for it and then so if when it, it didn't happen you'd be upset yes and when it did happen I was like okay cool we knew this would happen or I thought it was going to be a whole other album and it was only a few more songs but no it's fucking more songs you know what I mean like I should be excited about that but I feel like that that's what did it for me I feel like after that I was like there was too many highs too many like things of like what's going to happen what's going to be this and I was like I would have just loved to experience it organically how it would have been maybe like uh, like pre TikTok era. Agreed. Well, you know? now we just need to not interested on yes. Easter eggs and conspiracy theories so that we don't get them. But like also how cool would it be to figure out and crack an Easter egg and then have it happen? Like yeah. I am so happy for those people. Oh, totally. But at the same time, I'm like, I can't, I, I agree with that. I don't want to be let down anymore. Like remember how iconic it was when she put out the grids for a reputation with the snake and how fucking like insane it was like, Oh, iconic. Like so that was so, that's so good. different than how it's been with TikTok. But anyways, that's my maybe unpopular opinion. Um, but yeah, I just need to hit not interested. She loves an Easter egg though. She does. And I do too. That's the thing. But I think it's just, I need a, I never know what's real anymore. I know? get it. I, I get never it. know. I get it. But if someone has an Easter egg about her bringing Gary Lightbody out for the last time, then I will, <laughs> I'm a hit interested. Wait, you know what you need to do? Your phone just, Gary Lightbody, Gary Lightbody, Gary Lightbody, Gary Lightbody. Taylor Swift the last time, Taylor Swift the last time. The last time Taylor Swift featuring Gary, featuring Gary Lightbody. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, that's the song I hope I hear maybe in LA. I yeah. did want to hear Snow on the Beach and obviously she did it the night before we went and I was very sad about that. Yes. But it's okay, it is okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was awesome. I obviously will be seeing, we'll see her again. We met so many of you guys and that was like, like I, that blew my mind. It just felt so weird. Cause I was just like, oh my God, like we're all here for Taylor. You know what I mean? Like it was like, I love meeting you guys. I want to give a shout out to Rachel from the concert that we met. She was so sweet. She offered to buy me a drink and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm nearing blackout. I cannot accept the drink. And she <laughs> laughed. And then also Jessica, who we met at the casino table. I told her I'd say hi Jessica. to her. Hi, Jessica. I love, I, I, yeah. Oh my God. She was so sweet. I loved her. Everybody was so nice. We had a wonderful time and we tore up Vegas. Miraculously, after this three hour long concert, we did stay up till 5 a.m. <laughs> Like, we did. how did that happen? We had a lot of comments. So we left the concert back to the hotel. I was ready for bed. Remy was about to go to sleep. And I was like, bitch. I was ready to, for bed. I was ready for bed. I was like, we only had dinner last night. We didn't go out. We can't come to Vegas for our first real time together in Vegas. We went for Life is Beautiful. I know. I was like, we can't do this. I do. If I could have one wish right now. <laughs> just for me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's world peace. Obviously, well, not <laughs> obviously, obviously. Not for you and I to be single at the same time and in our feral rat <laughs> phases at the same time because we would have tore through Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I've got okay. nothing to live for. It's okay. <laughs> each of us can hold each other's hair at different times in exactly. our life. You know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. I did muster it up though. Oh you my did. God, yes. Okay, I did. Don't worry. I went out with you. Alicia got us on stage with Zed. <laughs> But I was like, bitch, you are not this. I was like, I'm pulling a friend card. I was no. like, you are like, I, I was like, you are rallying. And you were like, okay, I will. And I was like, bitch, you're fucking rallying. I was ready. We I fun. did. We went, we went on stage. I love Zed. I've been a Zed girly since my sorority days, uh, obviously, because that was like all the rage. And I love him. And it was, so, I've never been on stage with a DJ. That was really cool. <laughs> I'm glad I, I also was just happy for Steph. I was like, oh my God, mom's night out. She's fucking living it up right now. So like, Mom's I, night out. Like she was, I loved it. Um, 
her and Shelby ended up going back after we went back to the hotel, they ended up going to bed and then we ended up gambling. Yes. <laughs> Cause by this time now we're awake. It's you like two thirty. Yeah. 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 The next thing we know, <laughs> we made some money. We lost some money. We made a lot of money. Then we lost a lot of money. We were up though at the end. Shadow. Shadow. Love her. We uh, were up at the end. We're like, okay, we should probably like, we should go now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we went up and down, up and down, up and down. We're like, let's leave on a high. Let's go. We start walking back to the hotel. We check our phones. It is 5.30 a.m. Yep. 5.30 a.m. We get back to the room and I'm taking my shoes off <laughs> and I look down at my feet and I've had these crystal Jeffrey Campbell. Rhinestone. Rhinestone little kitten heels as Tommy likes to call them <laughs> that I've been Wait, wearing. Are those, not- those are my kitten Wait, heels. Wait, no, aren't kitten heels. They like- are, but he calls them kitten ah, heels. Yeah, you do. Fun fact, everybody. Tommy, my Wait. publicist at the time, I wore I these same about. little chunky sandals oh. on a carpet and I got a text from my publicist after and said, no more kitten heels on the carpet. You're wearing regular heels from now on. <laughs> so now I have my kitten heels. <laughs> and um, those shoes have been with me through so many ups and downs. Please go watch. Did you post it on TikTok? No, I'm not going to post it. Why? Because I didn't like it. Why? Because I didn't look cute. Remy Cruz! <laughs> but it's hilarious. I have these crystal shoes. Remy. These are the same shoes that I wore in Vegas at Hakkasan when I went home with that guy. And then I realized I didn't want to. And I told him I was going to leave. And he said, it's only going to take a couple minutes. And I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, that's not cute. And I walked myself back to the hotel in those little, <laughs> my little crystal shoes. Uh, they've been with me through so many trips, uh, so many events. Some tears. Some lots of tears. <laughs> lots of uh, other things. And uh, I have taken them off and I realized they're really starting to fall apart. Like they they were, the crystals were all coming off. <laughs> they look good, but when you look close. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, in the video, they didn't look that no, bad. Yeah. Close up. They were dingy. They were falling. The, the, the strings were coming off. There's the crystals like were dull. There's like spray tan forever on yeah, there. Exactly. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I think it's I think it's time to toss them. And we had a full little moment, a funeral for him, for them. Them. Him. <laughs> and uh, we, we said goodbye. I threw, and I, I my last final words were, um, you know, may these bless the next hoe that finds them because they're in my hoe shoes. Threw them into the trash. A couple We're seconds drunk. later, I hear, <laughs> I look over. Someone's on our hands and knees in the trash can. <laughs> and they have blessed the next hoe. <laughs> ah, and it, we were like, I was crying laughing. So like, that was the fun. That's why I'm like, I need you to post it. It's hilarious. We can post it on PB. How about we do that? Okay. 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 okay, 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 okay. okay. It is so Good. It is so funny. We were unhinged and we were trying to be quiet because Steph's literally in the next room over. She then, wasn't in the room with us, I will no, no, say. No. We closed the door so we could feel a little It was loud. like joined rooms, so we were just, but we were like trying to be quiet and it was so <laughs> we were funny. In the arms of an angel. And again, we're the same shoe size. So I was just like, oh, <laughs> let me take those. Did you take them? No. I left, <gasps> wait, I thought you took them for your friend. My friend. Remember, you're like, oh, she'll want those. Oh, my God. Well, no, because she's way bigger feet than oh, I do. Oh, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're they right. They should have right, gone right. to you. I should. Honestly, I should have kept them. I should them. have passed a little shoulder tap. A shoulder tap. You know what would have been like funnier? Hmm. Is if I just randomly wore them out one day. I would have. <laughs> and you had no idea I took them. <laughs> I would have to me. Jay. You're I'm, like, are those the, like in Devil Wears Prada, the Chanel's? Are those the me? <gasps> the Crystal Jeffrey Campbell's? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to buy you some for your birthday. That's going to be your gift. Please, I would love. That's going to be your gift. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> but that was great. The next night. Oh, my God. We had the best blackjack dealer the second night. Her name was Donna. Is Donna. Yes. And hi, Donna. she was telling us about, like, she had to put her dog down. And we all start crying. It was just us three. We start crying all at the black table. It was like 1.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning <laughs> going into Monday. We shouldn't have been there, but yet we were there. And I truly, like, I felt like we were there to make her, like, weak. I agree. Like, I could tell she loved us so much. She would, like, give us tips on, like, what to do. Like, she'd be like, Remy, double that down. Yeah. And then she'd be like, come on, leash. I mean, I love yeah, how she, she called so me cute. leash. She was so cute. We were talking about how she was turning 60 in a few months. Mm -hmm. And then she asked me when my birthday was. And I said, February 7th. And she was like, oh, my baby's was February 8th. That's how it came up. That's how it came up, yes. And then um, I wasn't sure, obviously, like, 
I, I didn't know her baby. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, how old okay, are they? Okay, I thought it was a kid yes. at first. Uh, yes, I thought so too. Well, because she said my baby. And mm. then she was like, um, I just lost my dog. Her birthday is February 8th. Her name oh. was Pinky. Pinky May. Pinky May. And we were like, oh, our dog's middle name is May. We had like actually sobbed in the middle of the ca- casino yeah. at 1.30 a.m. on a Monday. Like she whipped out tissues and started, and then she like gave us tissues too. We were, it was an, um, an amazing experience and I love Vegas. And she was giving us life advice and she was just like, um like you can love people from a distance and like just like struggles and all this stuff and then we followed her on instagram so we're gonna keep in touch i love her we're gonna go we're gonna go back oh no i like i need to see her again okay like she was the sweetest thing ever my mom did text me yesterday she said she listened to the most recent episode uh and she asked me if i want to go see kelly clarkson in vegas because kelly clarkson is going to vegas allegedly can i come i'm just kidding (laughs) you can come you can come i would love to go to vegas with your mom Sorry, mom. You're not invited because I know you would hate it. No. No, no, no. I, I, I'll invite her. She will not want to come. Okay. She does fair. not. But it's nice to be invited and you're welcome to come. Yes, mom. <laughs> Everyone thinks I hate my mom. No, they don't. <laughs> no, in a vlog, she like went to Trader Joe's and she's like, do you need anything? I was like, oh, like, honestly, I would love some like just pre-made chicken if you could grab that for me. Right. She comes back with, I kid you not, four bags for me for like groceries. And like, she got me like some just random stuff. This isn't a vlogmas thing. And I was like, mom, no, like, why'd you get me this? And I was upset, but people didn't realize I was upset. So I was like, why are you wasting your money on me? Like, I didn't need all of this. It wasn't, I don't want it. And they're like, just let your mom love you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God, y'all, it's not that deep. They're like, wow, you're so mean to your mom. She got you cookies and you don't want them. I was like, no, because <laughs> I know I don't like those kind. And I, I'm, they're just going to get bad. And then I'm going to throw them away. And it's a waste of her money. Like uh. that was my, you know, but so just people think I hate my mom, which is funny. But you do not hate your mom. No. We love your mom. We talk about your mom love all you, the mom. time. Oh, also, the time this episode comes out, where are we going to be? Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to be in Hawaii for Alicia's 30th birthday. Wow! I am so excited. I finally decided what I wanted to do with the help of Remy um, while she was booking the Taylor Swift We tickets. did a lot in those chairs. Yeah, I know. We did, well, we had to sit for like out, like literally 20 hours yeah. in those chairs. Um, you were like, okay, what do you want to do for your birthday? Like I'm stressing out. And I was like, I know everyone, you, TK, Ashley, everyone's been like, just like help, like we'll help you. What do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just overwhelmed because it's my 30th and it should be something fun and big. But at the same time, I'm just overwhelmed. And I don't, I don't know if I want to do a party. Like, I don't want to be a bother to anyone. I'm just like, I don't know. And then you helped me decide what helped is you were like, would you rather do like a trip or something? I was like, yeah, but I don't want it to be far. And I was like, honestly, like a hotel by the pool with a drink in my hand. You want to relax. Amazing. Like relaxing. She's like, okay. You're like, okay, obviously no party then. I was like, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No party. Like we did that last year. Let's do something different. You're like, it's your 30th. Like it should be fun. I was like, yeah, I would love to go somewhere I've never been. And then we decided we are going to Maui. Maui Wowie. Maui Wowie. We're going to Hawaii. I've, I've been to Hawaii. I've never been to Maui. And I am so excited to sit on a chair by the beach, by a pool, with a drink in my hand, and my bitch is by my side. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good tagline. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. Maui is absolutely stunning. I've seen the best wildlife in Maui. So oh my God. buckle in for some good snorkeling, my friend. <laughs> I know we need to think about what else we want to do while we're there oh yes come up with a plan um if anybody works at big mama's fish house oh yes please contact me at miss remy ashton on instagram i have reached out it's basically like i personally think one of the best restaurants on the island it is truly some of the best food i've ever had in my life my parents are big maui goers specifically maui is their favorite island um grew up going there oh my god Fun little story about me as a child. Oh my God, I love, these are my favorite. Honestly, these are my all-time favorite. I um I can insert some photos. I'll have my mom send them. Um, Actually, I have them on my phone if you'd like to see. I would love. Uh, when I was little, my mom, would, how I'm going to be as a mother, my mom would dress Shane and I in matching variations of clothing. Oh my God. And uh, we went to Maui's kids and we were wearing matching little blue uh, Hawaiian flower dresses as seen. <laughs> Here, <gasps> wait! You guys are so cute. And um, <laughs> Shane looks the same. I know. 
Isn't it crazy? You do too, but you look like the kid version of yourself. I feel like his face is so similar. It's the lashes. <laughs> the lashes really changed the face. Oh my God. My parents took us in those outfits to a uh, luau. And <gasps> they, hair. they said- Oh my God, the you were the cutest fucking kid ever. Um, they brought all the kids up on stage. And uh, I think I picked and chose when I was going to be- shy or not and apparently at this point I wasn't shy and they brought us up on stage and Shane had like an emotional support uh sippy cup as a kid and he'd always hold it like this and so when he'd run at the park he'd run like this and so he brings a sippy cup and we go up on stage and they're teaching us how to how to dance I think it was Shane's turn and the like the spotlight was on him and he wouldn't move because he got stage right. So I went up behind him and I grabbed his shoulders and I shook him side to side. Uh, and the cr- they ate that shit up. Did he have a sippy cup? Yeah. Uh, I was like, shake, 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 making his hips move. And the whole, all the people were like, oh my God. And after my mom said, people came up and took pictures with us. Uh, a star. We were famous. You were destined. We between, were famous. Between that and the music book, you're destined. So, <laughs> destined. You're so right, actually. <laughs> I was a child star. Oh my God. I genuinely am really excited though. It's going to be so much fun. You're going to have the best time. How do you feel to be turning 30? I feel very weird. We can do, I feel like that's another whole episode we can yeah. probably do. But <gasps> let's do an episode going through your 20s. Yeah. Like, let's do that. It's, it's weird. It's very weird. But also I'm really excited. I feel like I've already... I don't know. I feel like I've just always struggled with confidence a lot. And the reason why I joke so much about like, oh my God, I'm so amazing is because like, you know, I remember we had that talk. That, no, <laughs> I know. I I thought about that this morning, actually. Oh my God. That really? was just a really crazy moment for me because you saw how like taken aback yeah, I was. You, we were having a drunk heart to heart in New York. Yep. Right <laughs> before we went to this lovely <laughs> little bar. Um, And Remy, I forget, well, I forget how it came up. Um, you were talking about, I was like, I looked you in the eyes. I was like, so when are we going to date? Yeah. I was like, when are we going to date? And you were like, oh, like, I don't know. Like I want to, I really do want to start. And I was like, well, what's been holding you back? Yes. And I was like, oh no, I just like get nervous. Like I get, I truly do get anxious. And you're like, what do you mean? And I was like, oh my God, for instance, like those guys over there, I would be very intimidated to go up and say anything. And you're like, what? what do you mean? I was like, no, like I'd be so scared. And you're like of rejection. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess like I just wouldn't, I could never do that. So I'm like so jealous of people who are that confident to just like go up and not care and be like, oh my God, and start flirting with guys. Right. And you were like, wait, what? Like you, your face was priceless. Cause you're like, what do you mean? You're like the most confident person I know. And I was like, bitch. I was like, no, not at all. I was like, that's why to me, my humor is hilarious because it's so conceited sounding, but I know I'm not like that. You know you're what like I mean? Overcompensating. I mean, that's everyone. You're like anyone who like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's so like textbook by the book, but to me, it was crazy how much you were like taken aback. You're like, wait, what really and I was like yeah the way that you were picking and choosing when to be shy I pick and choose when I have confidence I think I was more (laughs) surprised like what you're saying makes sense again yeah like it is pretty textbook a a textbook situation I think I was just more surprised that you were so self-aware about it oh and so like (laughs) you're like yeah duh and I was like oh oh my god (laughs) like I I didn't know that's like that you that's I didn't know that's how you truly felt and that also you were like very much in tune with that Mm -hmm. because were you always in tune with that? Or did oh, it take yeah. you a little? Really? <laughs> Holy shit, guys. Yeah. No. Really? I know. And that's why it's like when people are like, when are you going to date? It's like, it's not that I don't want to. It's just like very scary for me or very intimidating for me. Like, I don't know. Uh, would you say it is fear of rejection? Or would you say it's like, what is it that you're afraid of? I think it's hard because at first I used to not think it was fear of rejection, but I'm like, well, then what is it? You know what I mean? Is it because you hold yourself to a high standard and- if someone doesn't see that immediately, then you're, it would upset you. I don't know. I like, cause if it wasn't rejection, what else would it be? Like, clearly it has to be rejection, but also, yes. I mean, it, right. Yeah. I mean, I, that's I think at least it, what I've, I think it, it is rejection, but then to why is it, why does that bother? Is me? the rejection bothering you? Yeah. Is it because you hold yourself to a high standard and you're like, people should see that. Is it because you don't hold yourself to a high standard and you're worried about that? You know what I mean? Like it, it all stems from somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure somewhere in my childhood, I'm sure somewhere like like in high school, like I'm sure there's some thing that it's tied to, which my therapist could probably figure out for me. I, <laughs> But like, I'm sure it's something about that for sure. Mm-hmm. But yes, I, like it was just so funny how you were like, what? I just was like, oh, 
That was very candid of you to say. <laughs> and I'm like, duh. <laughs> I was like, and? <laughs> duh. Um, no, but I appreciated it. I thought it was really cool that you were so, like, in touch with that. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, well, because I think for so long I would be like, okay, well, why don't I date? And I was like, well, clearly... I always envied those girls who would just like go up to like a whole group of guys or whatever. Even that, I mean, that's an extreme, but even for me, I was always just surprised because you just didn't seem like there was a want to. Oh, bitch. No, no. The want, the want is there. The- <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Like I wouldn't have made out with that one guy. Like the one's there. <laughs> Like the what is there? I just am never in those situations. This is a like I I'm, just feel like I'm, we're really bonding right I'm, now. <laughs> and whether cameras are here or not, this is lovely. <laughs> like I'm not asexual. <laughs> I never thought. Did you think that? At one point I did. <laughs> At one point I thought maybe. Until you got me a present. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is that why you got it for me? It was my own little science experiment. No, 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 no. No, like it never, like, no, I never thought you were asexual. Like really, really. I like, sometimes I was like, maybe. And like, if she is, that's awesome for her. It's fine. I don't know. I just, from my point of view, you just didn't, maybe if you did care, you just didn't care enough to like try and date. Nor. That's what, that's what I I always just was like, (laughs) because I went, I was never confident enough to like, go up to a group of guys and mm-hmm. just like chat with them. Like Kaylee, textbook, yes. that bitch loves herself and will go up and like- Like how? She's like, every, if they don't like me, that's their problem. But like that, she's so, that's so not, I, clearly that's not my mentality. No, n- me either. So I'm like- I would wait for guys to come talk to me, but once they did, then I would be like, chill. But I feel like we're, we're all, we were all like, I was in between you and Kaylee. Mm-hmm. And I, but like for me, when I would watch you, I'd always just be like, oh, like she just doesn't, want to like you were too busy worrying about work or something else going on in your life which like that's amazing it's just you never had like the the, a strong enough desire to do so I didn't (sighs) think you were asexual and that's why you weren't doing it (laughs) there was a couple days where I was like maybe (laughs) and we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there I love you so much (laughs) oh my god no yeah I'm I feel like Ollie and I are similar in the sense of like we need someone to like hit on us and us turn them down four times and then we'll like but we expect them to keep coming back. You know, like, we're like, no, we were flirting. <laughs> I fucking hate you. No, I'm I was like, flirting. I hate you. Like, oh, it was so, ob- I was being too obvious. I was being way <laughs> too obvious. Oh, I was like, I was like desperate. <laughs> I do think everyone's flirting styles are really funny. Everyone obviously yeah. flirts in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. funny. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, on that note. <laughs> On that note, Alicia does have a date this week, and we're very excited about it. Yeah, no, no, I do. she is dating. We were talking like very past tense. Yeah, when was that New York trip? January, like, just a couple months ago. <laughs> very past tense. But oh I will God. say, since coming home from New York, you have taken the dating bull by its horns. I think I've just realized I really don't like apps. That's fine, and, and you always knew that. I always knew that, but I always felt bad. I'm like, Alicia, well, where the fuck are you gonna meet anyone? You know what I mean? You always knew that, but I commend you for still trying. Thank you so much, You're bitch. Welcome. I love you. I love you, and we love you guys. And Taylor Swift. <laughs> and Taylor Swift. And Gary Lightbody. And Gary Lightbody. <laughs> <laughs> I should follow him on Instagram. <laughs> What's a big Snow Patrol song? Is it Chasing, Chasing cars? cars? Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. All right, guys. Well, if I lay here. Yep. Thank you so much for watching Pretty Basic. Thank you for listening. And uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram, on TikTok, Pretty Basic, Pretty Basic Official. And we'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Bye.